So this video is going to cover a general overview using the CS3D imaging software. I'm currently on version 3.10.4. If you are on, on a previous version, everything I'm going to cover is pretty much the same. There are some different features, but for all intents and purposes, everything will be pretty much identical to how your software looks and works. The best way to learn, I feel, or one of the best ways is to open up a scan yourself, uh, watch some of the video, pause the video, and play around the software. So watch, pause, play, and repeat. So I'm currently working in the orthogonal slicing tab. There are other tabs, which I will get to, but currently in the orthogonal tab, we're looking at the axial, coronal, and sagittal planes. Axial is going to be controlled by my yellow movement handles. You can see here, this is my yellow quadrant, which can be moved or manipulated with my yellow movement handle. And that slices through the scan, top to bottom, bottom to top, whatever you want to call it, head to foot. Um, my coronal planes is controlled by my purple movement handle, which can be found in my other two views, which is slicing through the patient anterior posteriorly or front to back. You can see I can grab my purple handle over here as well, and it does the same thing. The colored movement handles of the area that you want to manipulate will always be found in the other two views. So if I want to man manipulate my yellow axial planes, I will find my yellow movement handles in my other two views. And then lastly, my sagittal plane slicing through left and right. I can manipulate this one by finding my teal movement handle in my other two planes. In each of these areas, you can see there are different options. And each of them has the ability to capture a DICOM screenshot, a JPEG or a TIFF screenshot, maximizing my view, minimizing my view. Dual screen opens up another option if you have two monitors to manipulate two different uh, views simultaneously. In each of these views, I can also select one by one or three by three or one by three and so on in each of these views. I'll cover this option at a different video. And also in each of these views, you can change the slice thickness from the lowest, which is the native resolution of the image and how it was captured, all the way up to a very thick 82 millimeter slice, which you'll see will kind of look like uh, a Ceph in the sagittal view, all the way down to the very thin 150 micron slice. In the top left-hand portion of the screen, under adjustments, you can see I have MPR adjustments, multi-planar reconstruction. I can open this, you can see it's blue, so you know it's open. And this is where I can actually adjust lighter or darker. I can adjust contrast, and my little reset button down here takes it back to the original image. And I can also adjust my edge enhancer, which is a little bit more helpful if you're looking at a, a thicker slice, which can be evident on your curve slicing tab, which I'll show you at a later video. I can close this and go on to 3D adjustments. These are options for adjusting your 3D rendering only. The top bar is called the gradient threshold, and the bottom one is your transparency. The gradient threshold uh, really only affects the image or manipulates the image once the transparency is slid to the left a little bit. You can see if I have my transparency all the way to the right at 100%, uh, my top bar doesn't really do too much. Now regarding these options down here, you can change the 3D rendering from shiny bone 
to bone, a little bit of a change. Shiny just kind of adds a little bit of a uh, flashlight or a light around the image. You can see here on the actual teeth, if I changed it back to bone compared to shiny, makes a little bit of a difference. Transparent uh, bone, grayscale, realist, and shiny realist. So you can choose which one you like the best. The rest of these options I'll cover at a later video. Okay, you'll also notice too, I can open and close my 3D adjustments. I can also have my MPR adjustments open simultaneously. And you'll see, here's my MPR adjustments. And then down here is my, uh, are my 3D adjustments. And then you can open and close each one to give yourself more room to view things. Under my mouse settings, you have a couple of options. I'm currently set to zoom, so if I move my mouse over in these views and move my mouse wheel or slide my mouse wheel, I'm going to zoom in and out. If I'm trying to diagnose uh, number eight and nine and I zoom in on that area, it blows that area off of the screen. I can right click and hold and pull that image back down into the field of view. If I change it to slide and put my mouse over my axial view and move my mouse wheel, I'm going to slice or slide slowly through that view. If I put it over my chronal view, I'm going to slice or slide slowly through my chronal view and so on. Putting my mouse over my 3D rendering and use my mouse wheel will simply zoom in and out. Right clicking and holding on my 3D rendering will will move my 3D rendering around. Left clicking will manipulate rotation, orientation. Again, right clicking will move it. Having my NPR button selected under the mouse settings allows me to left click on these images and actually adjust my contrast. So I'm left clicking and holding and dragging, adjusting my contrast up and down and adjusting brightness left and right, where I can move it diagonally and adjust both. And you'll actually see under my MPR adjustments, so here's my brightness and contrast, and you can watch them. As I move my mouse up or down, you'll see that move. Left and right, you'll see that move, or I can drag diagonally, and they'll both move. Getting it back to how the original image came in off of the CBCT, you can hit your reset under my MPR adjustments, and that takes you back to the original image. Now I still have both of these open, and I can close them. The 3D rendering will uh, manipulations can actually be done here. So first of all, I can put my mouse over my sagittal button, click it, and it just changes automatically to my sagittal view, my coronal orientation. So I'm looking directly at the patient's face. Okay, and so on. You can also hit this icon here and have different options for visualizing which plane you are in. For example, I can select wireframe and now I can see my yellow or my axial plane. So that slice that I'm looking at right here is that exact slice right there to give you an orientation of where you are, uh, for example, are you at the apical portion, coronal aspect, mid root, where exactly are you? And as I move my yellow bar, you'll see my axial slice move in the upper left. And in the 3D rendering, you'll also see your axial slice move up and down as well. I could also right click inside of this plane, hold it, and that also is another way to move through the scan. I can also change this to NPR, which is a little bit of a hybrid application of visualizing your 3D rendering and your NPR views. And lastly, my full color view. I think this is actually fairly helpful uh, early on to give you a visual of exactly where you are from an orientation perspective. Where are you in my sagittal view? 
frontal view and so on. Give you this perspective to see that chromal view move a little bit easier. So these are just some very basic functionalities of using the CS3D imaging software just to kind of get you started. Again, we were in the orthogonal slicing tab, which basically means simply your axial, coronal, and sagittal cuts uh, visualized at a 90 degree angle. And uh, typically this is where oral maxillofacial radiologists live, uh, but also the more practical applications for private practice and dentistry will be using these other tabs, which we'll cover in future videos. Hope this helps. Thanks.